folks, thank you again for hanging out with us. This is Adventures of the Black Nerds, episode 73. There's probably we're probably higher than 73, but we're only counting like official episodes because I yeah. know we we've had one offs, we've had interviews, we've had all type of craziness. Mm-hmm. But folks, I am J67, I'm... the RPG gamer. Now, dude, bro, I got titles now. I know you got a lot of titles. You you're Do doing. They, really a... mean much? they mean a I lot. Guess... They mean a lot because yeah. you got AKA this, AKA that, <laughs> AKA this again. AKA that again. Like, you got a lot. Bro, it, it's, it's, it's really trippy. Um, but, but all those titles mean something to different people, too. True. See? That is true. Mm-hmm. And we got Mr. Silent Assassin. It's T. Jones, man. And I feel like you're going <laughs> to turn that into something it shouldn't be. Just call me T. Right. Jones, please. Please. <laughs> I can't wait. Until I get big money to buy my name, the correct name. T. Jones. Ain't no X. T. Jones. It's T. Jones. The X is just there because T. Jones isn't available right now in these streets. Let let me let me let me tell you, me not understanding the whole X thing is just a placeholder shows you how much multiplayer I did not play growing up. Well, because like I, I always thought I was like, damn, that's a lot of X's. How do you say your name? X X X Killer One X X. I was like, X, hey, it, like it, how it, do I say that? Everything after everything yeah, after like, your true name one. is like inverted. I, I mean, the X thing came about when I played SOCOM. I know that for a fact. Like when SOCOM came out, my name was long. And what happened was, I'm not sure if you remember this, but when the, the quick scoping community came out and they were going for clips, excuse me, a lot of people wanted when they when they got like multi kills or feeds, they would call them feeds. Five man, six man feeds. They would want their name and then the person that the their kill feed to be all down one. If your name was long enough, it would put the other person under, so you wouldn't get a good kill feed. So a lot of people shortened their name, and that's why I did it. So that's why I went from T Infamous J to T Jones because T Jones gave me the feed that I was looking for. So he was like, "Yeah, I'm out here. I just, you know, you just mad because I'm styling on you." Listen, hey. <laughs> I'm not gonna front. I was a monster in SOCOM, and when they came out with their little competitive, you know, weekly matches thing, we had to do it. We went 21 and 0, lost our first game, and then the whole clan disbanded after after that. Bro, you know what? That's actually that's. Go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm 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 talking crap. I'm what T Jones. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I, I feel like y'all that's got the, the true introduction to T Jones, right? Like mm-hmm. we got the origin story behind the villain. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> well, folks, we this is crazy. We're off to a great start, and we are going to be doing our damnedest to keep this going. And I keep saying that because I really mean it this time. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. This time, I mean it, because I will get on here and do a podcast solo and talk to the ether. T. Jones will get up here, do a podcast, talk to the ether. I'll bring people in to talk to the ether mm-hmm. with me. It's going to happen. And it's just, I want to, um, because we all know consistency is key. You know, we want to grow. We want to give you guys better production. We want to give you guys a better experience. Um, we're going to be setting up in the future. I know we haven't necessarily talked about this off stream, but this is some things I've been rattling off. Um, I know we're going to get like our Ko-Fi uh, coffee set up. We're going to be getting our, um, you know, I don't know if we'll do Patreon and coffee, whatever. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll be doing different things and maybe we'll set up like, you know, people who are certain level donors. We could get you as a guest on the podcast, you know, different. We'll set up, we'll do game nights. Like I really want to build this up now and i'm talking a good game like i'm not already busy but i just know that this is where it all started for me mm-hmm. so i'm never gonna put kick this aside but i also like this you, is where it all started also though you i think we have kind of touched on this and this 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 thing we kind of condensed it was like yo let's just start with the podcast but we have so many other ideas that we want to do and we've briefly discussed some of these things so hopefully we can you know introduce these things and in a in a you know in a reasonable 
fashion, we don't want to bite off too much. Yeah. Like you said, you're busy, I'm busy, yeah. we have other things to do. But I'm, to be honest, I'm just glad that we are back. I'm glad this is week number two in a row. Uh, shout out to, to uh, you know, Tone Deaf Network. Man. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I thought I was fired for a minute. <laughs> I thought I was fired. Man, I, was, I was like, call me. In the middle of one of his podcasts, in the middle of the Death Fresh show, he was like, oh, yeah, be in like 20 minutes. Call me. I was like, damn. Damn. This is it. <laughs> this is the one. I felt like, yeah. I was like, oh, it's been coming. Uh, I was well, like, do I have to? You don't want to just email me? Yeah. Like, just... we can, oh, I'll, tomorrow. Can I talk to you next week? Yeah, I, like I all of a sudden calling in. Like I'll be back. Uh, I felt like I could call them to the principal's office. Yeah, I was but, like, damn. Shout out to him. I didn't even um, know what I did. They were, you know, he to 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 get that call from you. Um, was like, yo, we just need to get in. We need to get in there and do something. You know. All right. Well, yep. Let's do it. Let's just make some changes, and and that's what I went and did. I went and made some changes, and you know, I got I got a lot still going on, but. <clears throat> I'm I'm glad to be back, and I'm glad that everything is at the point where it's at now. So, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. You know what? And um, so now rolling over into gaming nerd and just world talk. Oh yeah, shout out, shout out, <laughs> shout out, nerds new war. I got my hoodie on, you know, hoodie nerds on. Rep the, rep, the, rep the brand, rep the brand. Yeah, much. I, I really appreciate that, dude. Gotcha. I got my shirt back there, gotcha. sitting on the couch. I don't know why they put it on. I'm gonna put it over my face out here. Look, big Danny. No, but um, but no. Real talk. You brought up SoCom. Mm -hmm. Why do you think PlayStation hasn't brought back SoCom? All right. So there's multiple things around it. Um, I think SoCom would not work in the realm that we have nowadays. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but when they were in the mixed midst of uh, what was it? It was so uh, PlayStation or Sony came out because SOCOM was a Sony interactive game. And when they came out with yeah. the whole they were going to remaster Crash Bandicoot, it was between multiple games. The two games that I remember for sure was Crash Bandicoot and then also SOCOM was on there. So it was like, all right, people got to vote and Crash Bandicoot won. Um, from a, a business standpoint, I understand why Crash Bandicoot should have you, you shouldn't have, have to have an axe. It was that should have won regardless because of um, the, the the notoriety behind Crash Bandicoot and PlayStation. Whereas Sony, uh, whereas SOCOM was a niche game. It was a great game when it first came out uh, in a market of like being this third person shooter, being a, a game where you can interact with NPCs and make them do specific objectives, stuff like that. But then you also had the aspect of like now, this realm of world that we're in with battle royales, with first person, everything being in a first person shooter format or close to being in a first person shooter format, um, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't do good. They, uh, Slant 6 took over Confrontation. Slant 6 did a horrible job. And Confrontation that came with the controller, right? No, no, no. That was SOCOM 4. That was the one that came with the, okay. the actual where you could use the wands with the gun in. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the controller. Remember, there was a special edition that came with an actual controller. I thought it was Confrontation. No, 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 no. No. Confrontation came out with PlayStation 3. And when Confrontation came out, it came out like, remember when that, that dry spell of video games where so, because PlayStation 3 came Bro, out with I no games. It was another bubble. No games. Yeah. I remember that. That was dry as hell. Mm -hmm. And there was no, you, you really had no games to play. Uh, and then they came out with Confrontation. And that that was the game where I I dove into, I tried to get any and everybody. I used to come home, do 12 hours on that game from after school. And uh, I, I, you know, not to do my own horn, but I was a monster in that game. Uh, but yeah, it just didn't make any sense. It, well, now this is me speaking from a a fan of SOCOM standpoint. I would love to have for them, love for them to have brought it back. Uh, the reason why is because not only am I a super fan, but the the game, I met so many different people. I have so many different friends from that game, and that game was a game that really wasn't about. It was about the skill you put into it, but. It, a lot of communication was needed to play that game. Where you couldn't do the things you do in Call of Duty in that game. 
You couldn't run and gun and kill seven people. You know, do a seven, get a seven man feed in that game without communicating. So you didn't even reload fast enough. Exactly. So, um, yeah, and then headshots was pivotal in that game. Uh, you know, map placement. The maps were like it, it was a it was a great arena shooter. I don't think it would sub, excuse me survive in the market of today, two thousand and seventeen. Why not? Why not? Because third person shooters and games like that aren't what people are playing. The, a game like that, if you die, remember you're waiting seven minutes, eight minutes before you respawn back. Whereas yeah. in you know, you think about a battle royale, yeah, you can die and just say, "All right, I'm gonna start over," and you there, you're not punished from it for it. Whereas in SOCOM, if you died and left a room, you deranked yourself, and you didn't want to derank yourself because your rank meant something. Like once you got to like that five star general, because and then it introduced you to like the the mercenary levels, like the French SAS level, like it, it had all of those in there. And I remember how um, when Confrontation came out, they they did all the. It, it was so like in. Um, it was so like uh, like they did so much work around it, like actual get actually going out and hearing the actual sounds that these specific guns made when they were shot, uh, suppressed, unsuppressed, different attachments, and then they used those audio files to actually create the game. And I remember like, oh, this is going to be the best thing ever. Now it's just like, who cares? Like, <laughs> no one cares about that. Make a good game. Uh, so, yeah. It, and then that's what I was getting to. My last point to this. Slant 6 or Sony cut the servers for confrontation, for confrontation. So there's no servers for it. So there's a company out there uh. they, they that are create, creating a SOCOM light game. It's on Steam. I, I do not remember the name of it, but it it they have the same maps. They have some of the same maps. They have the same style, and it is still a game that some people are going to play. It's just it won't survive in this market. I, let me let, let me tell you. I think the way that that game will work is because of the fact that. As long as platform, not nah, let me rephrase. That's a bad example. P let me just get to the point. I believe games like that always have a place because games like Dark Souls exist. Mm -hmm. As popular as Dark Souls is, a lot of people don't play it. Yeah, like we we know more people who haven't played a Dark a Souls like game than people who actually do. Yeah, and have, mm -hmm. and then we even know less people who've actually beat one. Yeah, no, and that's that's, that's true. The board. That's true. Like. I've like, never beat one. So knowing that games, me neither. Mm. I've played, I've got hours into these games. Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3. I haven't played Soulsborne. I got it, but I haven't played it. But, uh, I mean, Bloodborne. Um, but I enjoy playing them. I just get to points where I have no idea what to do or how to progress. Yeah. Like, I, it, it's just, there's no hand-holding at all. Um, and then when they say get good, they mean it. So the fact yeah. that these games have mass success, the fact that PlayStation rolled the dice and opened up with Demon Souls with the PlayStation Five uh, um, next gen, you know they opened up with this game. There was only what four games: Miles Morales, Demon Souls, Astro World, uh, and and uh, I'm not even sure. I can't believe I'm blanking here. And that might it's probably because we ain't got we ain't Chad, got a, let me know we ain't got one yet. <laughs> yeah, I okay. I'll get to that in a second, mm -hmm. and I I think we've talked about it, but I, I'll jump on it again. But um, my my point my point behind all this is I think it has a space, but they have to adjust the marketing. They have to um, they have to sell it right. One, I don't think they can sell it as a full price game. Um, oh no! Yeah, I think that would be a disservice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be a disservice to um, <laughs> kiddo said no glasses. T Jones hit different. <laughs> you you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about, man. Nah, I got I I got <laughs> bugged out about the glare. <laughs> the glare is messing me up. We we gonna figure that out. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, um, I really think they would need to sell it at like a thirty dollar price tag, thirty five dollar price tag, a low buy in. Because it's going to be a very niche game. And then, of course, 
make your money on the back end with micro trans cosmetic microtransactions. Man, like you, man. and then and then you know what they would need to add? You know what they would need to add? I'm I'm basically I'm talking about how to get SOCOM into this gen. Yeah. You keep the same structure mm -hmm. because you it's otherwise it's rogue company or you know what I mean? Otherwise yeah. it's uh, something else. Keep it SOCOM, mm -hmm. but add in new age mechanics. You need to add in calling cards. I need to be able to customize my uh, my layout. Like I need, and then what would be a dope addition is dope ass kill screens, like where you could customize your kill screen where it's an overlay that yeah. you picked. You, I'm shocked Call of Duty hasn't done this yet. Um, like where it's a complete custom. Like when you get killed by me, this is what you see. Yeah. Like I like think that like that would actually like be a dope mechanic. Yeah, I mean stuff like that is stuff like that. People, I don't think companies take for granted on like how many people would appreciate stuff like that because of the, the, the you got to remember we're in a space where all of this can equate to creation, you know, where as I, if like, for example, back in the day of call of duty, people used to run around with just knives and the biggest one, the biggest YouTuber I used to watch who did it. His name was only use me blade. And, um, he used to run around and he, he never got kills with guns. He had a whole nother account for that, but he would have to do like tricky <laughs> things to, he would have to do tricky things to go ahead and to unlock these certain things with these knives. So, um, it, imagine getting killed by a knife and then by somebody with a knife. And then you see some like super, like, like the dude, when he killed you, like unicorns fly across your, like it stuff like that. Are those little nuances that that we as fans probably would like? Oh, that, that was dope. Like, or it it tilt me. Like, if I got killed by a dude with a knife, and then I see reindeers like in Santa Claus fly fly after he killed me, I'm gonna be mad. I'm I'm gonna look for you. And, <laughs> and it would add a whole new element of customiz customization, mm -hmm. and it would help to add to the streaming part of it because that's where you really are gonna win. Yeah, if your game is very streamable. You no matter how long the mat like oh and then we people love hardcore and Call of Duty now oh, yes man. I will say a hardcore match in Call in Call of Duty is quicker mm -hmm. it's not gonna you're not gonna have a but ah uh, no when you get to the higher tier SOCOM the average SOCOM match will go longer than yes. um, will be a little longer than the average Call of Duty hardcore mm -hmm. match but it won't be long long uh, it won't be too long to where people will lose interest. No, and but see that's the thing um, too. And what it? Oh, go ahead. What was you? Were you about to read something? We got a, we got a question. What is your favorite COD game you've ever played? Ooh, okay. I know mine. I know mine. My favorite Call of Duty ever is uh, Black Ops Two. That's my. That's by far the best Call of Duty ever. I think it's it was the best Call of Duty competitively. That was the game I tried to play competitively. And I think if I would have had more friends in that realm, I, I, I would have been able to pursue it. But, uh, and then also everything felt smooth. Like, I didn't feel like I was getting cheated or you had something. I, I, didn't, I felt the guns were, all the guns were at a point where you can use them. Because remember, they had the AK-74, uh, I forget the name of it, the AN. Not the AN-74, which was a beast. They had the M8. They had the uh, the Scorpion, which was one of the best submachine guns ever. You also had the, uh, what was one, what was the other one? Um, they had the little Uzi. I forget the name of it. The MS, the MSU or the MSC? MS something. But I think that by far, hands down, the maps were perfect. Um, kill you could actually spawn trap perfectly. The spawns were great. That game just was that was probably that and Black Ops One was the first games that I actually went through and prestiged all the way to the to the to the neck to the last level. Oh, was and it then Black Ops One so, that brought and then it. Zombies, zombies was the shit. Like that was it. Was Black Ops one um, the one that brought in Akimbo, and uh, was that the one with Ice Cube, or was that Black Ops two? I think Ice Cube was Black Ops two, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Black Ops two. What? Whatever one had the Akimbo, the Akimbo what? And 
Because Modern Just Warfare Two had a had a had a Kimbo as well. I know, I know, I believe it was Black Ops that I enjoyed the most. I Black uh, Ops Black Ops One. Black Ops One was yeah, the one but, you raged. The one you raged when the dude hit you with the Magnum. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that, Black yeah. Ops Black Ops One is the Call of Duty that I played the most besides Modern Warfare. I enjoyed. I make. It's hard for me to compare Black Ops, uh, the OG Black Ops, to Modern Warf, the current remake or what the current Modern Warfare. Yeah, because it's such a time gap. What is it over like ten years? Yeah, close to it. Okay, that's a that's a long time. That's a big the first Black gap. Ops, right? So, yeah. Um. So I like the my favorite is the OG Black Ops. What are the numbers, Mason? Yeah. So um, that 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 came out two thousand and ten. So that that was a decade ago. And that's the one. Yeah. Hold on. Is that the one with? I don't know what if up, that's Jake? The, if that's the one with uh, Ice Cube. Somebody said, "What up, Trav?" Oh, let me see. Oh, oh that's done. Yeah, that's like, done. My... What up? We was just talking about SoCom. What up? Oh. Yeah, that's dude. that's done. He was my that was like people talk about duos, like having a duo in a game. That was my duo, like. Yo, we about to rush. Uh, what was the name of the map? Uh, what was the name of the SoCal map? We would rush through through ruins. Oh, man, I forget the name of the map. We, me and him would Is rush. Is that where you would dip? We're in the middle? It was at the middle? Yeah, where so you could, you could literally spawn and snipe yeah. right to the spawn if you were sniping. But the, if, if you spawned on the, 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 the what's the name side? The, uh, the seal side? You can run to the left. Or to the right and run through a place we called ruins and ruin. If you, if you come out the the back end of it, crossroads. Cro- no, 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 not crossroads. Uh, it wasn't crossroads. Desert glory. Desert glory was the name of the map. Desert glory. That man, boy. I. You know what? If I had money to like create my own game, it would it would resemble SOCOM. Desert bro, glory was it, my shit. No, but. Uh, but okay, to finish answering Black uh, Ops. Gabe uh, Gabe's question for me, it was Black Ops One okay. uh, story. Uh, I think that was the last Call of Duty that I really played the story and cared. Yeah, um, I haven't. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't played a Call of Duty story since. It's been all multiplayer for me. The... Oddly enough, oddly enough, and the stories are wait, 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 good. So you've never played? You've never played Call of Duty Four Modern Warfare story mode? That's crazy. I think the story mode, the best story mode is either Modern Warfare 2 because Modern Warfare 2 was just tragic. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 was just off the rocker when it came Wait, to Wait, what story. was the Modern Warfare 2? Is that, is that when Remember it the, first the came controversial in? one where they were in the airport and you just... Mo- oh, no, no. That was before Black Ops, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, that was before Black Ops. So Black Ops was the last game. That I played the story. Okay. So I remember no Russians. I remember that. Yeah. Okay. I remember that vividly. Mm-hmm. And then you didn't get to the van, and you got to the van, and they were like, "Oh yeah, bah! yeah." Like, there you oh. go. Um. He said no fish. Oh, fish hook. That was another map. <laughs> so calm. Yeah. So calm map. Bro, but okay. So so done. I'm sitting here talking about things that could bring so calm back. I was saying that overall, you keep the exact same structure, except you add in a bunch of cosmetic factors, mm-hmm. Be- and such as kill cams. You got to add dope kill cams and customizable kill cams. You got to add calling cards with different emblems and this and that, stuff that's earned, um, and stuff that you can buy. Because we want, and then you got to make the price of the game low. Yeah. I'm thinking max $35. And Even that, I, I, would too, I would say that's too. I would say that's too high. I would I, if the game, the game, because that game is a because there's no story. Yeah, and it's online only. So yeah, I would I would say twenty bucks, and then make make all of those cosmetic. I have all those cosmetics, but also when they when they think about the game, they they in today's realm, it is not unusual to think about the future. So you give us yes. what we had before. Right, I, I wouldn't even be mad if they gave yeah. SOCOM confrontation and they just updated it, and then they said, "All right, cool, we're gonna have packs every three months because three months is probably the uh-huh. duration of like DLCs and stuff like that." But then you you could say, uh, "Like with these packs, you get these different guns." Like I think 
to be honest, I think uh, the, the best game that does guns super well has to be uh, Counter-Strike, CSGO. And the reason why I say that is yeah. because they have all of these guns. They have guns that people use and all of that. But they also have the co- the cosmetic aspect about it. Even though the whole like gambling and, and pack openings was kind of like a tragic moment in CSGO history. Because they had like the gambling websites for skins and all of that. Um, if uh, you did something like that where skins were super rare and people were able to get them though. Um, in the super RNG factor. I'm okay with that. Where where you have to or do specific objectives, get a certain amount of kills with this, or do this or do that. It was crazy. Like it, it would be those would be that would be the path you would have to take to bring that game back. Because if it's nothing and to grind for, people aren't going to play it. And then uh, Dunn said uh, he just wants his IW M14 and M16 burst. Mm. That's it. See, yeah, you, hey, the M14 and, and was so, nasty. The M14 and was bro, disgusting. I'm telling you, I I could imagine this game doing well for the simple fact that games such as, like you said, CSGO has been running for damn near 20 years, mm-hmm. um, if not more. Um, and, I mean, I remember going to internet cafes. And playing it. In River, in downtown. Yeah. And playing CSGO. Mm-hmm. I remember, I was a child yeah. going to internet cafes and playing that. Then, um, then you had, um, then you got games that, like, Escape from Tarkov. Yeah. Where literally you will die in this world. There's no maps. It's realistic shooting. Mm-hmm. No maps. You gotta know where you at. And you can lose all your shit. Yeah. Like at any given moment. Though, whether I, it's to I a like bot, whether it's to a real person. So, but guess what their price point is? If I'm not mistaken, I think it's like 35 bucks. They understand, um, they understand what they are. Yeah. Um, and I think I think that's why. The fact that games like this exist mm-hmm. and that people love Rogue Company, um, people love um, people love. I mean, Fortnite, Fortnite exists, but of course, it's a free to play and it's uh, got the colors and cartoons and they cater to a wide spectrum of people. So For- that's, that's Fortnite, different. I don't know if I want Thanos running around with an M14. Fortnite uh, has, me down has so eclipsed like the, the expectations of gaming. And the reason why I say that is because they yeah. skyrocketed to fame to where... It's a social platform. Exactly. Where people, where companies can say, hey, well, listen, we just created this movie. Can we make a character or a skin that people can purchase yeah. and you advertise our movie? Or, hey, we got the Star Wars in here. It, it, they, they've hit a, a different trajectory that's just out of this world. It, Fortnite is a social media platform. The fact that you can go in and... I'm waiting for a K-pop concert to happen in Fortnite. Oh, I don't should. know if they already did BTS, but it, it's that's got to be coming. It's anytime coming. Anytime soon. It's coming. Because um, they already did... Yeah. They did Travis they, Scott. They've done concerts. They did, they did a, uh, uh, the Kid Marshmallow. Cuddy. They did, oh, they did a Kid Cudi. Yep. See, I didn't know that. that. All of that stuff is coming. I think... Wait. I, no, no, no. My bad. Kid Cudi, a kid, I believe a Kid Cudi song was a part of the Travis Scott... Yeah. Thing. But no, but it, it just album releases. You could do it's became like Minecraft. Minecraft is up there to that level too. Just doesn't make as much money yeah. as Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike, like they have whole hidden libraries that countries with like uh like information restriction will go in and read books and watch movies and stuff like that through Fortnite. Yeah, I mean through Minecraft. Okay, like there that's a whole world well, in my, itself. They have, but a- it, it's. It, they have a rogue server on Minecraft where it's like the, the server is so old. I was watching a, a YouTuber talk about it. The server is so old that um, it no it's, it hasn't been updated. And literally, like, it, it's like hacks in there. Like, people are using glitches and, and stuff. And, um, like, you can die in there and uh, you have to, like, wait in a queue for, like, hours to get back in. Because of how like old and and how rogue and shit it is in there, uh, I thought. See, things like that are cool because once again, going back to SoCom, SoCom, you could create your own not server but your own room, and okay. you can like for example, say if I just wanted us to be in this room, I could create a room, name it, and then give y'all the name of it, and then y'all could join it. And then we can have like, uh, and, and none of this stuff is gained experience. So none of it affects your KD, things like that. Um, and the reason why they did that is because you can go in there and just bot kill, bot kill friends and, and, and boost your KD and stuff. So 
Though that aspect was was super cool, and I think you can do that on. Well, yeah, Fortnite has it as well, where you can have like these little. Uh, they call them rank 90s. down rooms. Exactly. Oh yeah, rank down rooms. You see, people used to do that. You you go to. See, this was it. In SOCOM two, you wanted your rank super low, so you would go to rooms like rooms and just like uh, team kill people. And when you team kill people, you derank yourself. And it, it, it was like reverse boosting of its time. So And you know what's crazy? They do that, they still do that in different games now. Yeah, people reverse um, people reverse boost in so in Call of Duty because they're tired of skill based yeah. matchmaking. Yep. He said butter sticks. Oh yep. I, see, so calm. They, I remember getting called butter sticks. Oh god. See, yeah, these is yeah, so Mac. Done. All of us used to play SOCOM. And X had the perfect setup. He he bought like multiple PlayStations, multiple console uh games, and we would be like we had Ethernet cores strung through the house. Like it was crazy. It was it was ridiculous. And it, it was him that put me on. I remember when I met Dunn. Dunn was like, Who's him? Who's this nigga? I said, uh, I'm just Travis. <laughs> <laughs> Travis? <laughs> and ever since then, me and him been solid. Like, that's my that's my that was my duo in call in in SOCOM. And because we, we played the bro, exact same way. Bro, see, that's that's clean. And I, I know the reason I, I speak so highly on it, I didn't even play it that much. Yeah. I, I really did not play it that much. But it was just an experience, and I, I think it's an experience that has a place in today's world. Yeah. Um, because of how people clearly people love difficult things. Mm -hmm. Like people people love extreme challenges. Yep. People love hyper realistic situations within gaming. Like there there's a clear place for all of this. Mm -hmm. Um and I think I think it's a I think it's an IP that they're really letting die for no real reason. Yeah, I mean, and they got the money. You own everything. It's like Sony. just let just make it happen. It's Sony. If 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 like just like how just like how there's if if you're gonna get a new Xbox, you can guarantee or you be you're making a great bet that you're gonna get a new Gears of War. Right? Now Gears of War is a bigger game, but Sony is big enough to make uh, SOCOM into something. So if they, and then it's nothing to update it. It's nothing to use the same maps. It's nothing to give us what we just, what we already had. It's nothing for them to do that. You already have it. Just, up, you know, yeah. update everything. Give us the service back. Give us everything yeah. back. You know, have a community yeah. manager. That's all you need to do because SOCOM Confrontation didn't have a community manager. I remember going to websites and it hadn't been the website hadn't been updated or we haven't heard anything about any new new DLCs, new nothing in over months. And then randomly you would go there and then that's when I was introduced to Twitter or not Twitter, uh, Facebook. And it was like randomly you will see some some super duper um, post about, oh, yeah, this is what's coming next. We're going to get snow maps, this, that and the third. It was crazy. So. And you know what? I, I just, you know, I didn't mean to go off on SOCOM. That was weird. We did not plan that at all. I, but I just... I, but I think this you knew is, that this was... what I really wanted to lead into. Okay. I wanted, I wanted to lead into, outside of SOCOM, because we already went down that road, what games do you want to see happen in the near future? Mm. It could be a, a style of game you want to see. It could be an IP that's dead that you want to bring back. Like, like, we're getting Perfect Dark back. Mm -hmm. uh, I have no idea what's about to happen. Um, shout out to the level one gaming team because them fools knew and they didn't let me know. Uh, <laughs> you know I go. Oh, Mag. Thank Mag. you. Thank That's you. 200, 200 people 250, battles. 250, 200 people battles. One Mag. 256 Bro. people. 256 people playing the same mode at the oh, same time, and you were in one God. specific area, and you could say, yo, listen, we're going to go to A area. And you, you can, can run. run. I'm going over there. Exactly. And we're going to go help. They need us. Uh -huh. Bro, that was the wildest game that people look at me like I'm stupid about. I'm like, you never played Mag? No. Nope. I played Mag. Mag. I, and I love sniping. That's what I do. And I, I like to snipe. Um, I'm usually a um, 
a battle, not a battle rifle. Well, battle rifle or a, a like DMR and stuff like that. Yeah, I like semi-automatic sniper rifles, uh, marksman so rifles. Tack, yeah, marksman. I love there them because I because I always miss my first shot unless I'm just lucky, unless somebody just stupid and standing absolutely like real stupid. life. I usually miss my first shot. Yeah, and my yeah. first shot is usually to gauge what's going on, and then I react accordingly. That's <laughs> why I like. They're like, why don't? Yeah, adjustments. They're like, why don't you use the fifty cal? It's easier. It's torso kill because I'm I'm gonna miss, and then it takes too long to get reset up. That's why I use the DMR, the um, uh, the carbine, yeah. anything like that. Like I use them because I'm like pow, pow, and then once I get you, I'm like, okay, I got you now. Yeah. Pow, pow, pow. Like and now, okay, you're done. Like I could. That's how I play. Mag, but Mag was ahead of bro. his time. Mag was Mag took a page out of like bad companies playbook and but they introduced something that we've never seen before as in 250 people they in the still map. haven't done it since and you can still you don't have to c complete the objectives in your area and these 250 people are all doing the exact same thing whether you're you're part of the 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 team that's defending or the team that's being pushed back and then the maps were set up so random. Like you can literally be in this, this industrial building area where it's like 10 flights of stairs and you're on top of a silo. It was just so random. Or you could be like in the woods in like a bush. It was crazy. That game was, it was a bananas. I, I loved that. It was a truly, um, it was a, like you said, the random experience made it feel like real war. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know nothing about war. I ain't been in it, but I imagine it being more like Mag than Call of Duty. Yeah. I'm trying to. Battlefield look. gives you that taste too, but Battlefield is still very linear in its in its structure. Like, you're here, we're here, we get here. So, um, so Mag. Like, you just. Mag. Mag was everywhere. Mag is, is, a, is a Sony interactive game, it was developed by Zipper. Oh, God. Yeah, see? So you sit in, and it was first person shooter. Mag would work in today's if they updated it, they made uh -huh. it look right, it would work. Yep. Yeah, 100%. So I'm trying to look what year. I think it came out 2010. It was released January 26, 2010 in North America. And then EU got it 3 days later, and then uh AU got it February 11th. So 2010. That's crazy. I, Why do I, don't I feel know what... like I was? Well, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That don't sound right. What? I thought I, was, I thought I, was, I thought that game was older. No. Ah. No, remember? Wow. Mag, Mag was a PlayStation Three game. Mag was that is true, man. Mag was uh, this was like college. And now that yeah. I'm thinking about it, this was like college. This was after I was hurt and. This is when yeah. I, that was really when I started gaming. My second injury. This is really when I started going crazy on video games. That's, That's crazy. Wild. That's remember. wild crazy now that I think about it. I really thought Mag was like I was in high school. I didn't realize nah. it was Wow. This is around yeah. the time where I started getting, We're getting old. Watching <laughs> it, it, boy. <laughs> this is the time when I really started watching YouTube videos and stuff like that. Hey, no lie, bro. Uh, shout out to Anthony. I really wish I would have just took his advice and started doing all this shit years ago. Yeah. yeah. He told me so long ago. He was like, bro, you play all the games everybody wants to play. You talk about all the stuff that people want to talk about. Why don't you just live stream? And honest to God, I used to think this stuff was stupid. Mm -hmm. I was like, nobody want to sit down and watch me play video games. I used to say it all the time. Yeah, because we didn't know any better. Like, we weren't the ones... Yeah, I really to, had no idea. When we wanted to play a video game, we were the old heads of that time. We're, why don't you just go play the game? Like, why watch people play the game? Yeah. Just go play well, it. Why watch people play? Yeah. This And then, this is why... This is You were saying something earlier about Pokemon. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. We're we going to get oh, into that yeah, we'll in a second. We'll get into that. Okay. Because I got a point about that that kind of solidifies why I fell off. And I didn't, I didn't know how to verbalize why I fell off. And getting into the Twitter community, what uh, did you guys talk about racing games? Okay, so I'll touch on this. Racing games, they the problem with racing games now, um, 
like I think back to really successful racing games that were ni- not niche because I think Gran Turismo and Forza, even though they're popular games, I, for some reason that they seem like really niche games. But then things like Dirt, uh, what was that one where you could drive across the country? Uh, was that Dirt as well? Or I'm thinking of, um, I forgot the name of it. Yeah, um, sure. Oh, the Pokemon Rare Candy glitch. Um, but but no, what up, man? <laughs> I was just talking about you. But but no, um, what's it called? Um, we need game. The games that I'm thinking that need to come back, they really can't because it was the music that drove a lot of it. Yeah, was like Midnight Club. Um, and it, because streaming is such a heavy thing now, then you're getting DMCA strikes. And like I delete, I deleted my. Let me let me tell you how real this DMCA stuff is and how shook it got me. I was playing The Last of Us Two uh, yesterday. I streamed it for damn near nine hours. I didn't know that in the game I was gonna come across a moment where Ice Cube was playing. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There was a random part where Ice Cube. Uh, um, what song was it? Was it Good Day? I think it was Good. A, a Ice Cube song was playing, and I immediately I was like, "Fuck!" Mm-hmm. Immediately, because because ne- this was like six hours in, yeah, to a single stream. So I'm like, I can't just go in and cut that. Like I was like, I was ready to delete it, but I ended up leaving my computer on last night and downloaded an eight hour vid- uh, nine hour stream and deleting it this morning just so I wouldn't get a DMCA strike. Really. Like, so knowing that that, and then I run all my games, which I don't even think that was an option on this because there's not a lot of commercial music in the post-apocalyptic world. Yeah. So I didn't think to worry about running randomly hearing a goddamn Ice Cube, Ice Cube song. song. <laughs> like, bro, I was so mad. I was, I thought it was dope. What an artist to pick, I though. Was pissed. What an artist to pick, though. Ice Cube. I was like, are you, I was pissed. I was like, are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. I was like, bro, I'm screwed. Yeah, the, I didn't know. The DMC- no, I didn't even think. Like- I, I think the DMCA thing is is trash. I think I think what platforms need to do better on at on explaining why you need streamers to do the things that they do and why they shouldn't be punished for advertising your immunity. Now, I'm all for saying, all right, cool. If you're gonna do that, Get then we need Yeah. If you're going to use our music that, or use this music that doesn't belong to you, then you're going to need... We're, let's come up with the medium. Let's try to work something out. Let's try to figure something out. I'm all for that. You know, because if you're just... A, I don't want... I don't want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Because at the end of the day, it's about them not receiving any profits from it. And you're profiting from it. Or they believe you're profiting from it. But I, I disagree with that. I can explain why I disagree with that to these people, but they wouldn't understand it from a streamer's standpoint. If you watch people stream and you watch people play, like for example, back in the day when they used to say, oh, um, you're playing their video game and you're streaming their video game and you're not paying them for it. Well, you know, how many people have they, bo- let's let's break down the math. How many people, how many people is watching my stream on a daily? How many people have bought, purchased your game because of me playing your stream daily? Oh, plus because of me playing your game and me streaming it daily. So this is advertisement for you. The advertisement you would go into paying somebody and 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 and, and, and to even expand on that, a lot of companies have taken advantage of that. That's why you have ambassadors yeah. of games now. You used to have ambassadors of brands. They call them brand ambassadors. Now you have ambassadors of games. They have put no Specific financial games. value into a game. They've only given their 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 audience that they've created to look at this game. So it's doing something. They're rece- you're 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 getting something from it. Which this I is, think that's more than so, enough. So 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 I think speaking on the DMCA stuff and the music, mm-hmm. I think there should as long as you can prove that a specific song was in a game. I don't think there should be any issue. I, I I don't think it should be a challenge. Like, look, you gotta lit. You see what game I'm playing? Yeah. You know what songs are in this game before I do. So why am I getting a strike for playing a game that you approved me to stream? Yeah. Like when I I haven't heard none of the uh, none of the copyrighted music in Cyberpunk 2077 because I'm only run I ran it on no copyrighted music from Jump. 
That's crazy. I haven't heard. That's crazy the, that that's the an tribe, option. The, uh, but I'm grateful for it. Yeah. That needs to be an option across the board. I think all, because yeah. that because I used to, all it's going to hurt. Remember, you could turn the music off in certain games. True. I think turning in I most turned, games. I turn the music off in in all games because uh, I don't need extra noise. Exactly. That's what I'm trying I don't to need. Yeah. I, I, need, I, I don't need extra noise. I need to hear footsteps. And then also, um, yeah, with this whole realm of strikes in there and people getting punished for it and losing out on millions of dollars because of it. So, but uh, yeah, I think I think that was. Um, uh, Jay, uh, Dunn said, "Play Cambodian music. They can't get you. Uh-huh. They can't get you. Take you up on hey, that. You know what, Tokyo? Right, T- Tokyo Extreme Racer Zero. I never played that one, but I played a lot of Midnight Club. Midnight Club. I was Street. about to say that. I did not. I I didn't realize how many how much racing games I used to play. I, I played you know a what? lot of racing games. I only played Need for Speed racing games." I only played Need for Speed racing games. I played some Gran Turismo's when they came out, and the, the reason why I never was, played Gran Turismo. It was be, too hard because it was too real. Remember, well, Gran Turismo, the one that came out with the PlayStation Three. Remember, it was like the only game that came out with it. So at one point, it yeah. was just that. So you you got that game and you played it, and I just I wasn't into the whole like racing. Like I'm not into. I wasn't into all of that. But but uh, Need for Speed, Midnight Club, I played those, and once again, the music is what will get you. But yep. Um, hey, can we talk about how expensive the PlayStation Three was? The PlayStation Three was. Don't Bro, me, what was it? Six hundred. It was a lot. Hold on, let me look it. It up. was. Let me look it up. I want to say it was. Six, I want to say it was six hundred dollars. There was Put another question way. we were supposed to talk about too. Oh, we oh Pokemon. Okay. But real quick, I remember the PlayStation 3 was so expensive, I ended up winning a scholarship and took that money and bought a PlayStation 3. <laughs> Holy like, love. Holy like, love. My mom was so mad at me. My mom was so pissed at me. I was like, I want this PlayStation. <laughs> like, bought I it. bought it. I want the scholarship. I'm buying it. Okay, so, so they had two models. The 20 gig model was the one that was like the... Because it had the slots. I believe it was a 20 gig model. Or no, it could have been the, the, the 60 gig model. Oh, no, I think... Yeah. There was a 60, a 40, and a 20. There no, was a 60, so 40, and a 20. When it first came out, it was only the 20 and the 60. The 40 came out after the fact. Because remember... Yeah. The, the, the slim one with the, the disc where it slid, that came yeah, out Yeah, the, the ugly... Five. It looked like a piano. Uh, it looked like a cheap piano. There was a grand piano, cheap piano, yeah, it looked and then like, the slim. So it it started at four ninety nine ninety nine for twenty gigs, that wouldn't do nothing <laughs> in today's market. And then you had the six the six hundred dollar one. Gigs is half an update. Yeah, so the six hundred dollar one was the model, was the model that uh, wow that with the flip up with the with the card slot. That's the one that everybody wants now. The collectors Bro, want. Hey, hey man, I remember burning bread. It, and Dunn said he spent eight seventy five and waited three hours. Mm-hmm. Hey man, look, <laughs> hey, you. I hey, remember. I remember. I bought I had my to win a whole scholarship. I bought my first PlayStation. You know what I had to do for my first PlayStation? I'm talking about. I saved every dollar. I didn't buy no J's. The candy grind was real, <laughs> and man. When I, when I bought my first PlayStation, I bought my very first T, my very first TV. Shout out to X, cause he 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 got a new flat screen, and then he had this big fat back TV, and it was heavy. This shit was heavy. It was like a house. I had to bring it upstairs. Remember my remember my house? Remember, <laughs> I had to bring it upstairs. We brought it upstairs, and they had the stand. But that TV was great. But um. Moving on. What was the what were we talking about? Oh, PlayStation. Brian said, "Do you remember when Deepaw got the PS3 before us?" Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, cuz everybody loved Deepaw. Deepaw. And that's <laughs> that's true hate right there. <laughs> hate. <laughs> nah, that's my hate, that's hate, my hate, G, hate. man. Um shout out to X. X, hey, X no. hooked it up. X, X sold me my first PlayStation 2 and my first TV. And he gave me like killer deals on them. Gave me games. <laughs> Bro, I, look, man, it, it's it's a trip. Um, and with so with Pokemon, let's jump on that. I know we get into the last minutes. I didn't realize what time it was. Damn, oh, we yeah. did that. Um, I'll tell you, it, why. it's crazy how 
Oh, okay. Oh, no, no. So yeah, go ahead, Pokemon, go ahead. So with Pokemon, <sighs> oh, shit. we are at we are at the point where Tim Tim should have been Pokemon should be what Tim Tim is. Why in the world isn't Pokemon a, a MMO? Like a clear as day MMO. Yeah. Or at least there is a branch of Pokemon that is an MMO. Mm-hmm. I should be able to hop on in the world and be like, hey, I'm going to go to whatever region and open up all the regions. Just make, charge me charge me $80. I don't care. Open up all the regions and be like, oh, I'm going to go to Johto for a bit. I'm going to go to Johto North American 1 region. Mm-hmm. Uh... And let me go see who's in there. What's going on, y'all? And run around. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, they doing a shiny... There's a shiny drop in Japan, the Japan login, if you can get there in the Kanto. That would be dope. That, that would be fire. That would be fire. I'm a, that scares me in a sense because you you got to think about like the, the, the different Pokemon in this region. And that kind of has to be a game of its own. So that has to be like the... the yeah, it, the would, it would be a... Se- so, once again, but this is... You got to hear me out, though. Because exclusivity is the reason why Pokemon are what they are. Because you have Pokemon sure. that are... It, and this is digital, not cards, not books, not yeah. movies. This is digital Pokemon. You have Pokemon that if if captured the way they were supposed to be captured, whether were, they were mystery gifts or... You know, it was an event type Pokemon, like a shiny, uh, like a shiny Pokemon that they gave out at GameStop, something like that. Those Pokemon, ha- they have a different value. So if you did a game like that, and you you were like, all right, cool, we have a Dark Cry event. You have to go to Sinnoh to catch Dark Cry, and it was a- that would be creating your Grand Theft Auto Online. Yes. <laughs> we should have a Grand Theft Auto online for Pokemon. Yeah, so Pokemon's that so literally, long so literally, you're you're gonna create this game, and you you probably will never see another Pokemon game like what we see today. You you will never see another because what's the point when you can just what's say, all right, we're gonna add this section. This is gonna be the the whatever the light region or whatever. You, we gonna go into space and catch catch Pokemon on different planets and and shit because. Uh, it feels like the world too big for them already. Um, Pokemon's been out long enough to where this should happen. But remember, and, how- and let me and let me ah let me tell you. Before, okay. I, I get where you're going with the comparison mm-hmm. for how I feel about Rockstar and how I feel about Game Freak and uh, and Nintendo. Yeah. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why I feel differently about Nintendo. Nintendo refuses to make adjustments and be better. So let them just be scummy to the max. <laughs> Create the damn MMO. You stupid. They, there is no, there is no better for Nintendo. But what, these fools just sold us. These fools just sold us a limited time release Mario game for full price. That's gonna die in March. Welcome, to, welcome to the world. Of video Mark games. Suckers. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, bro, they sold us a limited release for full price that is going to die. The listen. Mario you see people streaming where they're competing and doing all the runs and people yeah. are dying and falling off and it's like Tetris combat, but it's Mario. That shit's gone in March or April. Well, it's gone. I just... Like, po- Poke- will not exist. Pokemon. But you bought it. All right, so, listen, I get that. I get... But do those get... Mm, I don't know. I don't. I don't think I want to say that. Scum. Let them go full scum. <laughs> They're already there. All right. So Pokemon. Remember also, Pokemon games thrive off of the whole exclusivity to different games. So if you are a person that wants to catch them all and you want them to all have your tag, and and if you don't have internet or if you well, it's. You can't really say don't have internet, but say you don't have people to actually trade with. You're not looking for randoms. You, you want everything to be legit. You're gonna buy both copies. So you're gonna drop what 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 is a what is a a uh, a the cost of a Switch game? Is it sixty bucks? Uh, sixty. Yeah. See, yeah, that's it's crazy. But that's a hundred and twenty bucks for two games. Because Breath of the Wild is it. still full price. Hold up. Oh, let me hold up for a second. Let me show you my 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 3ds case real quick. Oh Jesus, folks! 
Breath of the Wild is still sixty dollars. Nintendo is scummy. They are very scummy. They prey on our nostalgia. I thought I had to go for. They prey on our nostalgia. Um, bro, like it. I all of these is Pokemon games. <laughs> all of them. See what I'm saying? All of them. See and some saying? of them, when you look, and then I have DS ones. Some of these games cost yep. sixty bucks a pop. Sixty. And yep. they, oh, they're DS, not 3DS. That's crazy. <laughs> yep. So, bro, these are, look, look, let me show you, let me show you how stupid I am as much crap as I'm talking about Nintendo. These are my recent pickups. Oh, these are, these are the new, <laughs> these are the new ones. They got you. Look, these, they got me. Oh, and I'm buying on the 15th. I got a, I set a calendar date. I'm buying the ultimate special edition and I might get two just to sell one because scum time. <laughs> um, I'm flipping that bad boy. They man. re-releasing Scott Pilgrim. They're oh, re-releasing okay. Scott Pilgrim. I I know I got that on. And they're coming out with a physical. Bro, they're re-releasing it. They're bringing it to Switch, PlayStation Four, and I'm buying the Switch one because Switch games hold value clearly. Mm -hmm. Um, bro, I I got Fire Emblem Divinity. I don't know why I bought this. I bought it because I wanted it. It was a limited run. I wanted the physical. I could have bought the digital, but I want. I, when it comes to Switch. Because I don't trust certain, I don't trust companies with digital. Like I, yeah. like I trust Steam only due to time. And uh, you play Mario Kart? No, my kids do. I don't play Mario Kart because oh, I'm trash. I, I got Mario like Kart beat down. Same DS. reason I don't play Switch. Sa same reason I don't play Smash Bros. Because I'm trash. I got online one time. Ooh, hey, one time. Hey, I got my ass. What was I me. thinking? I this little boy beat me so bad. I said. It, it kind of motivated me a little bit, but at the same time, I was like, yo, if you like this, and I'll be watching these competitive Smash Brother people, play, I'm not playing y'all. I, I, can't, I can't get this. The way he no. disrespected me, I couldn't move. <laughs> I couldn't. He was jumping off the map, floating back, grabbing the edge, so I couldn't grab. I'm like, I'm not doing it. I'm here asking him, like, how do I help I me? Didn't, I didn't know you could, like, full blown counter. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know. And that's been a thing forever. I didn't know that's that. been like since the second one. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that. And fools be like, "Bing!" and lock you, and then fucking combo and Bruh, send you to space, you and then bring that ass back. You know, <laughs> you know what? You know what tripped me out because I was super into Street Fighter. Um, it's like the the they call them frames, and it's literally like distance, yeah, and, and like squares and and shit like like. You're grabbing frame, like how close you are, and different characters can do different things within frames. Like, I was watching a competitive dude play, and they li he literally was breaking it down. Like, all right, listen, this is like a, a, a this is footsies, and this is this, and he was breaking all like the super intricate details of like fighting games, and I was like, yo, this is too much, but you kind of know what you're doing if you if you play those games often and you just don't know the terminology i was like i'm good man you know y'all listen how about you play one-on-one -on -one in like one v one me and call of duty like i'll take that all day <laughs> i got a fighting chance bro with fighting games and why i fell off is when i realized the level gap between uh one when i what really got me to fall off, because I never really played competitive. I used to play a lot of fighting games, too. Mm -hmm. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat. Um, I never really got into Tekken. That Tekken was too was technical shit, for me. Yeah. Even in just... Uh, like mm -hmm. It was just too technical for me. Like, Dead or Alive, Tekken, Tekken 2, uh, Nina, Soul Calibur. All you needed was two I never, buttons. All you needed bro, was, was I never, X and Circle. And she would do her jab. And she could just keep doing the, the little jabs. Oh, well, alright. So, but, oh, uh, go ahead. Cause I want to go back to uh, uh, King. Oh, I I loved I loved uh, King of Fighter. I loved the art design. Yeah, Guilty like Gear. It. That whole that whole uh, what were they called? Who was it? Arc um, Arc System. Okay. Funny enough, I just contacted them. Uh, Arc System Games. Um, I I'm and then like uh, Killer Instinct Blaze, was, was good uh, too. Kingdom. Killer Instinct was Killer fun. Instinct. I used to play them a lot. Yeah. Uh, even Bloody Roar. Um, I never played like Dark Stalkers. But I was watching, uh, I was watching a YouTuber talk about uh, the 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 depth behind. I believe it was Street Fighter Three Third Strike, 
and okay. how there was uh, like that one big match that everybody talks about where old boy came back and it was Chun Li versus uh, oh Ken. you're talking about uh, the parry the the ultimate he parried yeah Chun Li super or her super yeah with Ken and then hit her yeah and then it, yes that was and uh, Daigo won. versus but, they, but that was Daigo versus Daigo did it it was Daigo that did it hold on. But what's so crazy is there somebody just brought out a, a video to show that there was a bounce out uh, thing that Chun Li could have done. They were like, "This could have changed history," mm -hmm. and it was already in the game, and people didn't know. But the problem is, the moment only exists in certain levels and certain builds and certain corners. Oh, okay. So it was it's the the the, the situation you're talking about is called Moment Thirty Seven. Number thirty-seven, and it was Daigo yes. versus Justin Wong yes. at Evo two thousand and four. I watched that a thousand times. I tried to do it. I can't do it, bro. I I've watched that. I've watched that moment. Yeah. And what's so crazy is there was a moment where that Chun Li could have bounced out, and it just came up like this week on Twitter. Mm -hmm. People lost their minds. They was like, "Look, not trying to drum drum up no <laughs> shit, but watch this." And they showed a video, and Twitter lost their damn mind. Yeah. I think it was trending for a bit. That's how crazy they were. Like history could have been changed, but you but with you, this one move. But you know what makes that so crazy is that remember we're watching the elite of an elite of elite play, and in the moment, some of these things, and it's never the same when you're playing it. Like when people are playing like the new Dragon Ball Z. It's not, you may think that what you're doing is like, oh yeah, you could have did this, but in the moment, you just never know. Just you never ne know. So yeah. um, I, I love watching those breakdowns. That's just like people who never played football break down football. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. That, you know, I yeah, never really, it, it, I, I enjoy them because it's like, all right, well, I would love to see another moment like this, but I would love to see it reversed. But yeah. Like for example, if you if you watch Sonic Fox thirteen and zero, where he where he beat a dude, he like seven zero the dude, and the dude asked for another chance, and he thirteen zero them, where he didn't lose a round to this dude. Um, those moments, it was like, all right, well, what if he did win a round? Then all right, then would the moment have been soli as solidified as it was, and would his his status be you know questioned or whatever? But all right, well, but let's go but, back to all right, but back. What, going back, back to, to the what? original point. Okay. I was going to... Oh, we, uh, the original point of the fighting game situation. Okay. Because um, I know we were talking about uh, Pokemon. Yeah. Um, And I'm going to let you finish on that. Uh, But with the with the fighting games, it just... I realized that the the I'm not competitive enough, nor do I care enough about the technical aspects of it. Hey. And I'm a button masher at heart. Yeah. I think, so you know what's I don't, funny like, about I that? don't do well... What's funny about that? I'm sorry to cut you off, but I have to because you, me, no, and you I'm done. are yeah, yeah. are totally different when it comes to video games. I love the competitiveness of video games, and I also love the difficulty. But like, I got my like. All right, for example, my cousin Oscar. Shout out to OG. He he's not. He doesn't play video games to be like competitive. Like he plays them to have fun, and if he's not having fun in it, he doesn't really care for it. Right. And you yep. or him are the same in that because you it's like, all right, like if I say like, hey, let's let's sign up for this tournament and play. I can see you saying like, mm, nah, like yeah. you're asking a lot of me. You tell I got to run the meta. Nah, <laughs> like I guess nah. I can see that. So I would never come to you and say, hey, listen, let's try to go play Call of Duty. Let's 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 do game battles, whatever, whatever, because I know that's not your thing. But for me, I totally enjoy that aspect. Like if people want, if if I had a team that were like, yo, let's, you know, let's run some competitive this or competitive that, I'm down for it. Because that I feel like is how you become like a master at the game. But that's what makes me fun. I'm naturally competitive in that regard. I just started learning how not to be competitive in video games. And you know what taught it's me like, that is my kids is teaching me that. You know, playing with my daughter uh, is teaching me that. Like, you know, it's having fun. Like, watching her play and do some shit she ain't never did before and she's enjoying it. Like, that's what's making me enjoy it more. So, I kind of just, like, fell back. I would love to do it still, but uh, it's not the same. That's why I like raids. That's why I like the, the hard shit and, like, stuff like that. And, and, bro, like, 
so I followed it. Shout out to the Iron Lords, uh, dope uh, podcast and writing websites. Um, they they are, and I'm I gotta link you up with them. They are heavy duty with Call of Duty mm. or Call of Duty uh, with um, Destiny. Uh, Destiny. Mm-hmm. They they shared a screenshot and I cringed so hard. It was like, man, good raid tonight, guys. And it said 450 kills, two hours and 57 minutes. I was going. Like, <laughs> that is like, what? Hey, listen. I was like, what? Listen, one day, if you ever get up to it and you want the experience, we can find some people, go back to Destiny 1, and we can run a raid. Because two hours and something minutes in today's, it's like, oh, okay, that's that's a normal raid. People used to be in raids for eight hours. Hours, <laughs> ten hours. Can I? Can I? Did I don't know if I ever told you this, but one. Remember, we one. We was in there for four hours and didn't even finish because somebody kept messing up and then somebody dropped and yeah. then we were down to three men and, like, and we couldn't kill Callus because we didn't have enough people. Oh to yeah, the damn that's, see, that's right. Uh, okay, I was like, nah, uh, I'm good. I'm good. I, I'll need the gun. And did all that, nothing out of it. <laughs> and then just my luck. No, because you've seen my roles in Destiny. You've seen my fucking roles yeah. in Destiny. I would have did all that and didn't even get an exotic. Uh, an exotic. Exactly. I already know. They would have threw me a purple. They would have threw me a light boosting purple. <laughs> I wouldn't even have gotten an exotic. I wouldn't have got no drops. Listen. I, listen, raiding was always cool. I'm always down for it. Uh, because once you learn the mechanics in a raid, you're, you're fine. And, the, and that's why like I always enjoyed those. But... Kind of rolling over into into Pokemon, rolling back into Pokemon. Yeah. This is gonna be my last thought as well. And Dun, um, and Dunn said he's down. You hey, I, you know I'm ready. You know I'm ready. And the new raid is out too. So if you get back, man, let me know. Hit me up. Um, yeah that that was my people are Pokemon. That was my raid duo, but um as well. But uh yeah, so going back to into Pokemon, the reason why I got back into into Pokemon was because of the competitive aspect of it. So and then also I wanted like my childhood dream of catching and uh, catching them all, but it, it's kind of looking real shaky right now because it's like nine hundred of them. Something we went from one fifty to like one fifty one to like nine hundred. That's that's kind of a lot. So I um I just I started watching a whole bunch of competitive Pokemon stuff and I started you know getting back into it and I even like was learning about like the breeding and like how there's people out there who are just Pokemon breeders and this is all in game and they and see breed- I like stuff like that yeah I would you know me I when I play these type of games Baron what you doing oh I'm just crafting yeah wow. so, so you like- can do that you can and literally what it is it's just like getting the right nature matching it up getting the item putting them together having them breed breeding perfect IV shinies, stuff like that. Because then they can trade them to this person and this person can then make like, you know, drop some money in my PayPal account and people do that. And I was super fascinated by it because it was like, you could go breed it yourself. You can go do all this stuff yourself, but it's like, nah, I just want the team. And then I want to go play with the team. Like, and this is how you have like Pokemon world champion players and, and, and shit like that. So I, I always looked at that and said that that was dope. So I started watching that, but then I was like, you know what? Let me catch them all. I'm an adult now. I can buy my own DS. I got my own. <laughs> I can do all of this stuff. Let me go catch them all. I'm stuck in Sinnoh. I'm stuck in Gen 4. <laughs> I can't afford Diamond. It's too much. <laughs> and then what, they're charging like 80 or 90 for Diamond, aren't they? But like, yeah. If you if you don't go to like a trusted source. Because a lot of people are making fake copies, which I don't think there's nothing wrong with it because all they're doing is flashing it to a card, you know. But, you know, you, you have more chances of it like crashing, losing your saves, blah, blah, whatever, whatever. So right now, um, I'm trying to do Dex 1. I'm trying to get it all, bring them all up into the previous, the, this, this generation. And I should have been finishing that last year. But... All in all, I just started back again. I just caught the legendary birds in in uh, in Ceno, and uh, I'm having a blast. Like I, I like right now, I'm about to go lay up on my wife and play Pokemon. That's that's, that's it. That's She's it. cool. She cool as long as I'm chilling. So, so that's Bro, what I'm doing, folks. Ooh, we hit our mark. We bro. are beyond that. 
Yeah, we are really beyond that mark. Man. I just want to say thank you guys. Um, I want to say much love for chilling with us. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Tone Deaf Network family. Tone. Shout out to um, Level One Gaming. Much mm-hmm. love to you guys. That there is we the gaming website that I write for now. Um, I'm the communications director over there. Um, make sure to check out our individual YouTube channels. Yep. Make sure to subscribe to our level our our Ventures of Black Nerds YouTube channel. Um, and make sure to like and comment and share this. Please. It really helps us out. I know I've been putting it in the chat. When you guys hit share and you like, it does this whole algorithm thing. It makes us look more popular than we are. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, we got to yeah, shout really out Nerds Noir. Guys. Shout out Nerds Noir. Shout them out. Uh, yeah. The brand. I'm, the brand. I'm chilling in mine. Um, I all also want to shout out two other... other uh, branded companies i want to shout out my cousin who who made this hat um by the solace if you go to buy the solace.com you can purchase hats like these they're trucker hats with uh like sporting teams on them but they're like super dope also i want to shout out the flyway clothing they got a let me see if i can grab my hoodie real quick because they are dope And I've been rocking, this is what I've been rocking for the past two weeks, you know. So, I think they're dope. You may think they're they're dope. Follow them on Instagram. Um, I just had to get that out there because yep. that's what I'm enjoying these past, but, bro, I, I got to get me another one. I got to get two more of these, man. Two more, two more. Right? I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm telling you. But, folks... Check out all the links and everything, and y'all have a good one. We will see y'all next week. Much love and peace. Peace out.